everyone, I'm Justin Briner, and I play Deku in My Hero Academia Heroes Rising. Hello, I am Colleen Clinkenbeard, and I am one of the directors for the My Hero Academia Heroes Rising movie, and I play Momo Yayorozu. Hi, I'm Maxi Whitehead, and I play Katsuma. And I'm Clifford Chapin, I voice Kasuki Bakugo in My Hero Academia Heroes Rising. Hi, I'm Monica Rial, and I am also one of the directors of the movie. <laughs> Thanks to this lady right here, Miss <laughs> Colin Quick Beard. Um, but I also play Miss uh, Suyu Asui, also known as Brappy. That's voice. Hi, I'm Danny Chambers. I play Mahoro. When we first started this project, let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. And how it all began. It was kind of a waiting game of when is it going to happen, and then uh, I also knew that we were going to be recording it in Dallas at a Dallas studio rather than at Funimation proper, and that it would be kind of a compressed timeline. So I would need somebody at the helm with me whose directing style complemented my own, and entre <laughs> Monica Real. <laughs> well, we've worked together for so many years. We started way back on Kitty Grade, was the first show that we met and worked together. And I think even Aww. back then, we realized that our styles of acting are very similar. The more I worked with Colleen as a director, it was very easy. She could give me one word, and I'm like, I know what you're talking about, vice yeah. versa. So it only made sense that when she needed somebody, that um, I was very honored that she came to me. But we went over to uh, Ocotron and we spent a whole <laughs> lot of time running back and forth between studios. <laughs> but it was super exciting. I was a little scared in the beginning just because it was such a quick timeline. It just took me watching the movie, going over things, probably asking Colleen way too many questions. <laughs> it turned out great. Yeah, I'm it turned super out great. Excited. And it feels seamless. And any recording that you care deeply about, and that means a lot to the company, is going to be stressful. So it was stressful in that way, in that good way that means that you care about it and you love it and you want it to be awesome. Um, and we did, and it is. So what was your um, audition process like for the movie? I recorded it on my cell phone, and I had never submitted an audition remotely like that before. Oh, So okay. I was like, well, I don't know how this is gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> so I was so excited when I found out that I got to be in the show. That it's kind of the big one. Right yeah, now. it's really good. Yeah. Really good. What, really was your, good. what was your process like? Uh, I got the email and I was like, oh no, I, I guess I got it late because yeah. it, was, it was due the next day and I'm like, it's like eight o'clock, let me yeah. do this. So I did it with my makeshift setup, I yeah, guess. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then I set it in, I was like, Oh, I hope this is good because yeah. I'm excited. I just, I just love the part of the show. It's fun. Absolutely, it's, it's, it's crazy, and the art is wonderful, and the fights are awesome. The art is wonderful. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's so cool. So when I found out I got it, I was like, ah! I called my mom like, I'm gonna be in a movie. And she's yes. like, Oh my goodness, yay! <laughs> <laughs> she, she was the way animated. Yeah. So she's like, Okay, all right, good I'm for so you. I'm so glad you're working. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yep, yep. I totally understand. What did you think of the movie when you first saw it? It really exceeded my expectations. Like, I, I thought the first movie was was excellent, and mm -hmm. I liked a lot of what they did, so mm -hmm. I thought it, it, this movie would have a tough time kind of living up to those expectations, but it, it plus ultra, it went, knocked it out of the park. Like, I, this, this movie is outstanding. Wholly agree. I love it. <laughs> I loved it for many different reasons, but one of the main reasons I loved it is that there are a lot of characters that we don't know a lot about, we don't yes. see a lot of, and they really got their chance to shine. They did. Oh my gosh. Everybody got their moment. Yes, and they all worked together so seamlessly. Yeah. I saw the movie before you. Yeah. I remember going into another booth that you were recording in and being like, do you know <laughs> what happens in the movie? Because it's so good. Yeah. And I like raved to you for a few minutes about just how cool it was. Uh, and all the all the moments of Bakugo and Deku teaming up and fighting together and their team up moves. Oh my god! Everything is so cool. And I have to give it to Bakugo. Before this movie, this, this movie definitely changed the way I felt about I him. I feel like it changed the way a lot of people felt about mm -hmm. him, who had a, a place in the movie. So I, I totally get that. But it, I, you're right. Like getting to see Shoji and Ashido, people who haven't really had a lot of screen time, yeah. do something and show off how completely irreplaceable they are in the moment. That was, that was really awesome. I, 
Deku and Kachan, a little like oil and water. They a little don't, bit. They don't, they don't really get along so well. But no. uh, what, what does this movie sort of tell you about how their relationship is developed? Because we're a little bit in the future of where the show is running. Right, it's a little bit further ahead. Mm -hmm. So they have maybe made some steps, maybe. Hopefully, hopefully. It was one of the things that I was most excited about with the movie was the relationship being mm -hmm. explored between Deku and Kachan, is that we've had so many big fights and arguments and clashing moments through over the course of the series. We have not yet really gotten to explore how the last big fight has furthered them. There's, right. there's a little hint of it at the end of that one episode that maybe they're gonna start working past it, but we haven't seen that in effect to finally have this movie, this is our first piece of animation that we've gotten to actually work on. We're past just that hatred. Right. There's way more of a mutual understanding of each other. Uh, Bakugo is not in this film trying to make Deku give up anymore. Now Bakugo is more interested in, I want you to get to the point that you're really able to fight me at your best so that we can have a real fight. That's even a thing I say at one point yeah, with yeah. you. Is <laughs> right. I want us to have a real fight. Don't hold back, yeah. So to see that finally come to pass, that was a that was an awesome, a whole awesome moment of it. It's, it's probably my favorite thing about the movie. It's amazing. So. Yeah, just that they they both kind of hold this secret together now. It's not all on one or the other. Right. I think that's really nice. It's great. In the future, how do you mm -hmm. think? our characters will use their quirks, and what would their hero name be? Hmm. It seems like being able to heal people and regenerate their bodies would be a pretty valuable power to have, yeah. you know? <laughs> I feel like that that is definitely something that Katsuma could go on and develop and get stronger, and mm -hmm. now that he, he's obviously very powerful, even though he may not know how to use it fully yet, mm -hmm. because, I mean, that's, that's some serious work he did yeah. mm -hmm. to heal them both. As far as, <laughs> as far as a hero name goes, <laughs> I don't know, like, uh, Re regen Re regenimate, re <laughs> Gen <laughs> cell regeneration guy. So, uh, I don't it's know. It's hard. It's, it's really hard. hard. It's really hard. Mahiro, I think she would be a support hero because I don't. Mm. I don't think she'd be into the glitz and mm -hmm. glamour of fame and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think she just like I'm here to help. I honestly think her and her brother would do like a duo mm -hmm. thing, like Katsuma could grab all the, the, the people injured by the supervillains and take them away while uh, Mahiro uses her hologram and she could use it as a distraction yeah. to, to get people away. So I think they'd, it'd be cute if they were still together yeah. as their own little siblings team. I think that'd be adorable. Mm -hmm. And maybe her her hero name would be, be Hollow Gal Ooh. or Hollow, hollow Girl. <laughs> I like Hollow Gal. <laughs> I like it. something I've kind of noticed with these movies and even some of the villains is mm -hmm. that one quirk just isn't enough. You know, it's not fair. Right. Deku starts with nothing and he finally gets one quirk, right. mm -hmm. uh, which is amazing. But then you meet a villain like Nine who says, well, I get nine quirks, I get a hundred quirks because I'm just allowed to do that. I was really impressed how they just kind of popped into action. They totally did. There was a mild panic and then, okay, let's get to yeah. work as opposed to when we've seen them very early on in the show and it was just like, oh God, what do we do? When are the heroes <laughs> getting here to save us? Yeah. This is, they're in a situation here where the heroes aren't coming to save them or they will be very late because it's uh, far from the mainland. I love that, that it, it allows our heroes to kind of expand their powers or what they do with their abilities to fit the situation because with, with something like Nine where he's controlling the weather or he's, he's shooting laser beams out from everywhere. He's got big dragon tentacles. Right, this thing is happening now. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> Me punch hard. They react really well and they have been training for this for a long time. Mm -hmm. They know to jump to, they know how they work well together. So they're split up into groups that work well together. 
And I think one of the things that I like the most about them jumping to and not showing a lot of floundering, even though they're young heroes, is that it showed how strong the villains are. That the first time they jump to and they fight the villains, they all get smacked down. Mm -hmm. Because if they reacted so well and they're fighting together so well and they still got beaten easily, that means these villains must really know what they're doing and they're actually a threat. And so when they <laughs> recuperate and get back together and they really go after it together with a more strategic plan, you actually have question in your head of whether they're gonna be able to do it. And I think that's important for you to be engaged in the movie to, to feel like the villains actually could win. Considering most of the fights that you and I had in the movie yeah. were with Nine, mm -hmm. uh, very few fights. Uh, I have a fight against uh, a few of the other villains very briefly, right. but most of the fights that we're in together are, are against nine. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, I mean, if you're going against Deku and Bakugo, then you definitely need that handicap yeah. of mm -hmm. having a bunch of other quirks, right? Like, you're not gonna be able to beat us. There's no way. There's no yeah. way. There was an interesting theme that kept popping up throughout the movie. It is mostly between Izuku and Bakugo because one of them wants to save people. That's why he wants to be a hero. And the other one wants to win. Deku's all about saving people with a smile and protecting folks. Mm -hmm. And Kachan wants to be victorious and, and win. And, and be the best. Yes, yeah, be number one and prove his worth. You know, right. They mean the same thing, but they're very different ways to go about it. And this movie, with sort of the element of teaming up, those two work together. You can't protect people without winning, and you can't win without protecting these people. That's right. Sort of. it, doing, it, doing one means the other. Yes. The end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. The end of the movie. Come on. Like, <laughs> I, how did you even record it? I, I like, I was, I was flabbergasted. I was awestruck. I, I couldn't, I just, can we, can we take a pass of that again? I just want to see it. I just want to see it. <laughs> was your reaction when you watched it in Japanese before we started directing? I cried like a baby. <laughs> I cried Yay! like a baby. <laughs> because, you know, the whole show we're watching as, you know, Bakugo is just, can be so mean to uh -huh. poor little Deku, right? And he's trying so hard and becoming such a good hero. But then some of the lines that Kotsky had to Midori as he's talking, Oh my gosh, that whole thing about this is all you've ever wanted in you're your about life to and you're gonna give it up so that I can. And I think that this might be the thing that also makes Bakugo in the future start thinking about, not just about being number one or, yeah. you know, or fighting the villains, but also about saving people. Except he doesn't remember it. Oh crap, that's right, he doesn't remember yeah. it. Yeah, right? Wait, I no. mean, maybe he will. No, no because I know he, he does. He says, he says, ha what happened to me? It's amazing. It's so good. This is what people have been clamoring for. Yes. Like, and I didn't I didn't see it coming. I had no idea. There was talk out there, right? That yeah. this movie was originally one of the planned endings for My Hero Academia. Right. And it was something I had thought about once was wouldn't it be crazy if the ending of the series mm -hmm. was the way Deku becomes the number one hero is by sacrificing being a hero. Yeah. Right? Yep. And having to give it to Bakugan. Mm-hmm. That was just like a wild thought I had. Right, wouldn't it be crazy? Wouldn't it be crazy <laughs> if that were the ending? And so for that to be this movie was phenomenal. And I, I have to tell you, yeah. I was so driven that I had to record the movie before you. Okay. Yep, yep. <laughs> it was like one of the things I kept saying, I was like, I just want to get to the ending before Briner. I just want to get to the ending. Yeah. I just want to get to the ending. And I did, mm -hmm. narrowly. You did? I narrowly beat you to the ending of the movie. <laughs> you caught up real close, yeah. um, but you got to the same point that I had finished in a session and then picked up after me after I got to finish the movie. To do the, the Detroit smash oh, is yep. one of the coolest things of this whole series yeah. that I've gotten to do. And I've, I've had a lot of really great moments as Bakugo, but that will be easily one of my favorites yeah. uh, for a long time to come, if not just forever. It was a fantastic experience, and I'm glad that we got to share it together. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. And thank, thank you guys. You.
Yeah. Thank yeah. you for watching us. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I hope you're so excited for this movie, as excited as I am. And it's been great to get to talk with my friend Cliff here. Because yeah. I, I, was, I was surprised they'd let us do this again. Yeah, the um, last time didn't go very well for so, us. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure this episode's all about me. Well, so how about you oh, just... Oh, yeah. ah, That's right. All right. I hurt myself. Did you really? Oh, no. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even push you that hard. No, this was my fault. Yeah, and you like <laughs> just kept going with it. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. It's been such a pleasure, and I hope you're so excited for this movie. Yeah, thanks a lot, you guys. I hope you enjoy the film as much as we did. I have been dying for everyone to be able to see it so that we can just talk about it in the open, and, uh, and it was a real joy and pleasure to get to work on it.